Greetings, 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 my sports to the bone people. Welcome back to another video. Hope you guys are doing okay. Hope you are all enjoying the Sunday. So in this one, I just want to talk a little bit about Nicholas Puran. So Puran spoke to the media at the halfway stage of yesterday's game. You know, spoke about his innings and the fact that he wasn't getting any runs leading up to yesterday's game. You know, so we're going to take a look at what he had to say. Also, we see where Australia, they were extremely dominant against Pakistan in their test match there. Actually winning the game by 360 runs. Yes, 360. Mind you, we are going to be taking on Australia in January of next year. So we're going to take a look at how their players um, performed in that game. And we can talk a little bit about um, what to expect when we go there. So just give a listening ear until the end. Let me know what you all think in the comment section. You can also go right ahead and hit that subscribe button if you have not yet subscribed. All right. So let us just kick things off with Nicholas Puran. And then we will take a look at Pakistan um, versus Australia. So Puran, yesterday my people got in the 80s. I think he got 82. Um, at the halfway stage, it was looking like it would have been a much winning knock. But... <laughs> As you guys would appreciate, it didn't turn out to be so, right? Um, in the first two games, we didn't get much from him. So he was asked, um, coming into yesterday's game, what is it that he did different? And he was just saying, you know, it was all about just giving himself a chance, just staying out there, knocking out a, a couple of deliveries around, and just being confident in himself, being confident in his skills. Um... You know, it just so happened that he started off poorly where this series is concerned because he has been in good form um, coming out of the T10 and things. So, you know, he was saying that it's all about just being confident and backing your skill um, when things aren't going your way. Because once you know you have done the hard yards in terms of um, practice and, 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 and things like that, things will eventually uh, come good, right? Um... He said that he felt he left a couple of runs out there. You know, and this is before we knew that. We, this is before we lost the game. This was at the halfway stage. So that he felt he left a couple of runs out there. Uh, when he got out, we still had a few more overs to go. You know, he was necessarily thinking about the century base and what he's saying. It's just that um, with him being in and seeing the ball that well, he figured that he should have uh, gotten some more runs for the team. So... That is what he was saying. Um, you know, he spoke about understanding the game situation and just playing it based on what what you, you know, what is expected at the time or what is required at the time. You know, sometimes you go out there with a particular plan and while you're out there, things change. The game change a little bit. So you just have to um, go with the flow. You know, you just have to probably put away the game plan that you went out there with and come up with one so that is him saying that you know you have to understand the situation in the game um you know he spoke about he was asked about batting at number three and he said you know he was batting at number three for a little time it was working well for him and he you know it's something that he really like because um he gives you a chance to take the to take responsibility but you know um coming in at four not too far, not too far away from number three especially if we lose early wickets you know he would be in just just the same so he's saying that once he goes out early and he gets in he knows that it's a big responsibility you know for him to just stay out there and see um how best he can do for the team you know he was talking about going forward um you know going forward he's just looking to continue scoring some runs for the team looking to uh show shoulder some of the responsibility in terms of making sure that the team gets off to a good start and is able to propel in the back end of the innings so that is what nicholas puran was saying my peeps and um as i said this was at the halfway stage of the game yesterday right after we finished getting 222 so you know <laughs> you can imagine how 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 what he would what he would be saying at, at the end of the game you know i was at the halfway stage so Shout out to Nicholas Puran, 
West Indies team is always better with poor and scoring runs. You understand? Whether it is T20 or ODIs, when poor and is scoring runs, it is always um the team is always in a better place. So we hope this uh he will continue uh scoring some runs for us. Um let us just take a look at Australia versus Pakistan before I finish up. So Australia versus Pakistan in their first of three test match. Right, they have uh three test matches, you know, that's a three match series. And Australia won the first one there by 360 runs. Yes, 360 runs, my viewers and subscribers. Dominance there. So Australia, um, they batted first and scored 487 in their first innings. They bowled out Pakistan for 271. And um, that's in their first innings. Then Australia went back in, got 223 for five, declare. And then they bowled Pakistan out for 89. Yes, make sure you are listening keenly, my people, because these are some of the same players that we are probably going to go up against early next year. So in the first innings where Australia got over 400, David Warner scored that century, 164. Mitchell Marsh, who ended up getting the man of the match, he scored 90 in the first innings, got another half century in the second innings, plus he was amongst the wickets, so, you know, he was the man of the match. Um, he got 90, as I said, in the first innings there. Um, for Pakistan, their debutant, um, Jamal, he scored, well, he picked up 6 for 111 of 20.2 overs. So he was the pick of the bowlers there. Pakistan, in their first innings, when they got that 271, um, they would have seen Olhak getting 62. He was the top scorer for them. And uh, Shafiq at the top there getting 42. Now, bowling for Australia. Um, the wickets were shared. Nathan Lyon, you know, um, getting uh, 3 for 66. Would have also seen Mitchell Stark picking up 2 for 68. And um, Pat Cummins getting 2 for 35. A couple of other guys um, got 1-1 one, one wicket each. But those were the... the, the that, that's how it went. I didn't even give you guys the bowling. Yeah, yeah, I did. Alright, so Australia in the second innings when they got that 233 for 5 declare, it was um, Usman Kawaja, he got 90 off 190. David Warner got a duck. I understand Steve Smith made 45. Mitchell Marsh made 63 not out. And bowling for Pakistan there. Um, Shazad, he picked up three wickets. He was the pick of the bowlers. And Pakistan in their second innings batting made 89, as I said, all out. And it was carnage there. Mitchell Stark and Josh Hazelwood, they are the ones that did uh, most of the damage. So Stark picked up 3 for 31 from 9 overs. And we would have also seen Hazelwood with 3 for 13. And Nathan Lyon picked up 2. Captain Pat Cummins picked up 1. Um, some some low scores there for, for Pakistan, my viewers and subscribers. Baba Razam got 14. Shaquille got 24. Those were the top scorers um, for them. And um, Australia take a 1-0 lead in the three-match series. So just wanted to share some of that with you guys as we will be preparing. Well, as we speak, the test team is more than likely preparing for Australia. We're just not getting any, any information on that because of the T20 series. So that is pretty much it for this one, my people. Continue to stay tuned to the channel. One love. Bless.